We have something now which is part discussion and part little mini concert, a little mini recital. I'm joined by Adrian Thompson and his accompanist Anna Tilbrook, um, both with very considerable experience of English song, particularly the English romantic composers at the beginning of the 20th century. And we're looking at two of those who both in their separate ways were casualties of World War I. George Butterworth, because he was killed at a very young age indeed, having written a few highly promising, well, more than promising masterpieces, actually. And um, Ivor Gurney, who wasn't killed, but whose mental health never really recovered after World War I, although it's a very interesting question as to what extent the seeds of instability were already sown in Gurney, and what extent he'd already shown signs of mental problems before he went to World War I. And indeed, it has been argued that, in fact, his period at the trenches was possibly the stablest period of his life. But actually, being in the middle of the theater of war gave him a focus and a discipline which actually he often lacked and which he felt the need of in his life beforehand. Interesting point for debate. Yeah. But it's certainly interesting to compare what happened in terms of their music. Um, fascinating too, isn't it? Do you think we're hearing about soldiers today? I think most soldiers today, for what we gather, if, if we were to talk about maybe sending them off volumes of poetry to console them at the front in Afghanistan and Iraq, you would be met by deluges of derisive laughter. And yet that is what many soldiers did in the First World War. This was an era when high-ranking military figures were quite proud to show their sensitivity in the form of being avid poetry readers or lovers of classical music or whatever else. So that's an interesting change in itself, which is worthy of reflection. Even in World War II, I learned there were Russian soldiers, private soldiers at the front, going off to the front with volumes of the poems of Anna Akhmatova under their arms. Which again is something which is fascinating to confront, to contrast with our ages when the iPod seems to be the principal source of consolation for many soldiers. But uh, we'll, we'll start with George Butterworth. George Butterworth was um, regarded as an immensely promising young composer before he was posted to the front. Great friend of Vaughan Williams is. In fact, his death was an enormous shock to Vaughan Williams and um, Vaughan Williams carried on in many ways responding to Butterworth's death in many of his elegiac and uh, more troubled works after the war. But we're going to hear first two songs. Uh, first of all, a rather beautiful song called Loveliest of Trees, which is very typical, it seems, of the kind of uh, imagery that some soldiers found consoling at the front. Um, an image of a tree in full bloom, very much associated with the English pastoral landscape, which was so important in the work of these people. Um, Adrian, when you're singing music like this, this is a work in, this is a song in which there is nothing that you could immediately see as war imagery. <laughs> Absolutely not, in no. fact. It's deeply not there. And yet, do you feel that knowledge of where and when it was written and for what purpose, uh, this background, do you think that, that that's important for you when you sing it? I don't know whether it's that important when you're seeing it because I think the Butterworth settings were actually written before the war. Oh, yes. They were they were written in about 1912, I think. That's right. Yes. yes. And so they uh, I think we invest them with because of the fact that Butterworth was killed in 1916 or uh, whenever that we invest those songs with perhaps a little Cast more weight than Butterworth would have thought of. You know, uh, as he wasn't a unless he had some premonition, which I doubt. Yeah. I think that he, he, it's us that have been left yeah. behind or that have performed them later tend to put them as a slightly, in a, in a different category. It is interesting though when we come to the second song, isn't it? Just how <clears throat> very easy it is to oh, yes, let the totally. backward shadow, as it were, of yeah. World War I fall across this yes, music. Yes, well that's, that's, that's right. Well that's the Hausmann poem, of course, the lads in their hundreds. And um, it is very prophetic in the, in the respect I, uh, that it's, it's talking about all these lads in the village who we see coming down into Ludlow or from the countryside to enjoy the, the uh, facilities that the town gives them. And then they end up not, then they, they're going to stay forever young, never grow old. That's the big thing. Because there. they won't last long. Because they won't come back, yes. Yes. I think uh, on, that, um, on that point, though, it mm. is, as you mentioned earlier, um, 
there were, I think, thousands and thousands of soldiers took away with them in their knapsacks, yeah. the poetry, yeah. the, the um, Shropshire Lab. The Shropshire Lab was uh, very popular. To read, so yes. even though the, the music was written yeah, after absolutely. the war, I think the, the, the knowing that so many soldiers kind of, you know, read these yeah. poems yeah. probably absolutely. daily to kind of yeah. no, reminisce true. and to be, to think back to their homeland yeah. and their countryside and yeah. everything, I think just knowing that certainly gives me a... Yeah. Um, and up to a, World War One, into... up to World War One, every generation of uh, British young men had seen thousands slaughtered in some yeah. war yeah. or other because yeah. we were pretty busy on the world stage. But imagine, yes. in a way, the uh, the young the young soldier or, or the young men, not to say soldiers, but the young men of England, especially of that of that of a certain class would never have traveled even out of their villages no. rather than mm. so they didn't so another county was a strange place to them in england and then they're, they're, they're put somewhere where people don't speak english or you know they're in a completely and then they're in the middle of this carnage it must have been so incredibly uh, um well, it's so unreal that they must have thought they'd gone to hell or something. It was incredible because everything was so different in, on, on every level. And not was it only a, a foreign country, but people were, uh, were trying to kill them. Well, I think that's a very good point at which to hear this utter okay. contrast with what you've just described, the kind of imagery that sustained these okay. young men at the front. Loveliest of Trees by George Butterworth. <laughs> 